Hello, my name is Jake Poole. I'm the horticulturist arbor specialist out here at Northwest Trek out in Eatonville, Washington. We're in the greater Seattle area. Today, what you got in front of us here is uh, we're gonna make a Doug Fir Sorbet. What I like to call is a forager's delight sorbet. This is what you're looking for is the shoots, new shoots that you want. You don't want them getting too elongated shoots because then uh, the tannins and resin uh, flavor will come through too strong. So it's always good to pick it early. You can see you just, you just pick it off and then you'll end up rinsing it and washing it and then you would have a nice tray like this. Oh, and then we also have uh, our sorrel. This is redwood sorrel. Um, it's an oxalis. Um, you find this in the woods here in the Pacific Northwest. We'll need to have three cups of water. And we'll put that on the stove. And it does take uh, sugar. Um, the flavor alone of our Doug Fir straight alone is a little too strong. So you uh, help to smooth out the flavors, you use sugar. I like to use organic sugar. Add that in. All right, once you get up to a rolling boil, the sugar's nice and dissolved now. Now we'll add our ingredients. So like I said before, we're using uh, redwood sorrel. Um, now you can find this all over the United States, not maybe the species, but there's sorrel all over the United States. We'll add in our uh, ingredients. So this is one quart of Doug fir tips. And we're also going to put the, oxal or the oxalis or the uh, redwood sorrel in. This is pretty full. Now I, I use about three cups to get that nice lemon flavor. I pack them pretty full, both the Doug fir and the sorrel. You want to make sure that you get it submerged in the hot liquid. And you'll see it as it's uh, the hot liquid gets on it. It starts discoloring and it'll also start to um, squish down a little bit so it fits in the pan because this is a lot to put into one pan. So if you don't have sorrel in your area, you can probably find uh, rhubarb when it's in season in the grocery store. Or you can use also lemon juice. So there's a lot of alternatives. That's what I like about foraging is that you have a lot of different options of uh, things. You, you can be creative with your recipes. Find things that match that flavor or add something unique, you know, bring something unique to the mix. Okay, so now that that's all good, mixed in. You can see it cooled it down pretty fast. We'll turn off the oven. You don't have to remove it from heat, but then we'll let that steep for 30 minutes. Uh, once it's steep, um, then uh, we'll uh, end up straining it out. Um, and like I said, probably 30 minutes is good. Um, any longer than that, you're going to end up with a pretty strong flavor. So you can play with it as you like, but I you know, warn you, it's a little strong if you go much longer than that. All right, now it's been steeping for a half an hour. We're ready to strain this out. So this aroma on this it smells great. It's very lemony. You can smell it. The um, Doug fir um, imparts a nice uh, lemony flavor, but also the sorrel adds to it too. So now what we want to do is we want to strain it out. I like to use a pretty fine strainer. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to find a strainer that's fine enough, but this one works pretty good. You can pour that off in there. And you're going to strain it all off because we don't really want any of that other stuff in there discoloring it. Now we just want to strain off. You can see there's a lot more liquid in there. So it's definitely worth the time to strain it out. And with the finer mesh, you can actually squeeze it, which is nice. Um, so you can get all of that out of there. It's a little hard with a normal metal strainer, you know, to squeeze it down without squishing things through the strainer. So we'll take this and then we'll put this in ice cube trays and uh, we'll freeze this overnight. Um, it's pretty sugar, high sugar content, so it'll take a, a while to freeze it. So sometimes it'll take seven to eight hours. So I usually like to just do it overnight. Okay, so I have some here that I froze overnight so that we can make the recipe. So now we'll just use a, a regular blender to blend this up. So we're trying to get a nice consistency to it to be like a sorbet. So it's nice and slushy. Now we'll mix it up in our blender. And what we want to try to do is try to get a consistency that's you know similar to sorbet. We'll start it off slow. I'll need to tamp it down a little bit so that I can get all the cubes. You don't want to over blend it so it's not too sloshy. You see now it's turned a little bit more milkier color. You've added, introduced uh, oxygen to it, so it's got a little bit lighter color now. So it's all, all ready to go. So you can serve this as a nice sorbet 
in whatever glasses that you choose. I over blended this a little bit, but it's still, still good. Okay, now that you have this, you can, um, I like adding a little bit of garnishes, you know, to add to that theme. So we picked uh, some salmon berries, so you can pick whatever you can find in the area. Um, you know, this is so happened to be at the same time the Doug fir tips, so you can add those in for a nice uh, accent. And then even a couple of the fir boughs. You can also, if you want, you add a little bit more water and you blend it a couple more times to get it to be more like a spring cooler consistency. So it's a great uh, summer refresher on a nice warm day. Um, so it's a nice alternative. And there you go. You have a delicious Forger's Delight Sorbet. And the flavor? Mm. It's great. I can't describe the flavor. It's, um, that's what's wonderful about this. Um, with foraging is you're introducing flavors that you can't find normally at a grocery store. Um, this is a definite unique flavor of the woods and it's wonderful. If you want to find this recipe, uh, go to uh, check out online at digginseattle.com. <laughs>